Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome into the Big Ten Huddle. I'm your host, JR. We've got a lot to talk about going on in the Big Ten. Well, really, just kind of one thing to talk about, which is, in fact, a lot to talk about. But I have Zach Guggenheim of Big Ten Football Talk here to talk about it with me because, Zach, it's a lot, man. This uh, this Michigan stuff. Uh, tell me, where were you when this like hit your phone today? And what did you have to immediately stop doing to read about it? <laughs> Um, I, so I, I think ironically, I was, uh, I was at a church talking about our ministry with disciple makers. And I think as I looked at it, I'm like, oh man, like I, you know, I was like, put this away, you know, take communion, reflect on the Lord. And then, then I can think about football, but e, it's not, it's, it was one of those moments where you're like, this is a, a dumpster fire and I can't not look away. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I looked away for a little bit, but now I'm, no. I'm fully, fully looking at it. It's wild. So if you don't know what we're talking about earlier today, Dan Murphy and Pete Thamel, uh, every, every Michigan fans pay, favorite reporter, Pete Thamel, uh, at this point, I think <laughs> they all just want to burn his house to the ground. <laughs> um, if you uh, listen to what they're saying on Twitter and stuff, but uh, those those two got together and they reported on the Michigan uh, violations and the no- notice of allegation that is supposed to be coming soon. I think it was Chris Ballas that said that that was coming this week. It did not end up coming this week, but a draft was obtained by ESPN. Maybe the NCAA gave it to them. Maybe they just have some really good inside sources. I have no idea. Uh, but the ESPN did obtain a recent, that's the speculation, The re, a recent notice of allegations. Some Michigan fans are saying that it's possible this isn't recent. I tend to believe it is just because of some of the information in it. However, you can draw your own conclusions from that. If uh, if you're not sure, I encourage you to look it up just so that way you are well informed on all of what is going on here. But uh, essentially, Dan Murphy is going through the notice of allegations, talking about what is in the first draft, uh, or I don't even know if it's first draft, but what is in this draft, what he's observing, what he's seeing. Zach, are you buying a lot of the stuff in here or are you one of those people it's like it's a draft some stuff could be taken out or it's a draft and there could be more stuff than maybe what we've even been re- reading here what are your thoughts on that i well i think for the people who think that it's a draft where things could get taken out the problem is now it's out there and so that put it's not just about michigan right now it's also putting the ncaa under the, under the microscope yep so I, and I think you, you texted me off air about this. And I think the more I thought about it, the more I agreed with it. I, I would tend to think that it's either as is, or there might be more. Mm-hmm. It, and it's not just because, you know, the stuff going on with Michigan, the NCAA's name is on the line here too, with how they deal with this. And now that's out there. And so if, If they're like, hey, by the way, we thought there were seven violations. It's really just a slap in the wrist. Like, that's going to go bad college football wide, particularly for the NCAA's reputation's sake. So I I tend to think it's not going to be lighter. Right. Yeah. And uh, from what I have heard, kind of behind the scenes stuff is that, you know, there are some people and I don't want to get too far into this because I I don't have great, uh, you know, reporting on it or anything like that. But I have heard that there are a few Michigan recruits that are feeling a little bit uneasy about this report. Now, Michigan has very good recruiters on their staff. And so I'm sure that they're doing everything they can to try to calm the nerves of some of these recruits. But there are definitely some nerves there about some of the reporting and what's going on here. No, no, no um, punishments being talked about, just allegations right now. But uh, sometimes, and like we've talked about, Zach, sometimes the threat of what the punishment is going to be the unknown of it is sometimes worse than knowing what it is like if michigan coaches can just know what this is going to turn into whether it's a bull band whether it's vacated wins whether it's just show causes for jim harbaugh and the other guys involved like whatever it is like 
they just need to know at this point if you're a michigan coach you just want to know what is going on what the punishment is going to be so that way you can try to counteract that for your recruits and also for trying to retain the players on your current roster obviously the players on your current roster not as big of a deal because the transfer portal transfer portal doesn't open tomorrow but that portal for uh, recruits that's always open yeah i i'm trying to find it but i i do think there was a decommit today um for oh, michigan sure. but i'm trying i thought i saw it but um I'll look i'm on having 24 a tough 7 time. really fast yeah um i saw it and then it it i searched michigan decommit oh yeah. uh philip right you yeah philip right oh, yeah um the speculation though is that he was waffling even before this but oh, okay. still like is there is there coincidence that he decommits the same day as right. as this information coming out? Well, and you know, I don't want to get too far into this because I do want to talk about the actual article. But I mean, I didn't think it was a coincidence that when Isaiah Hole came out and said nothing's going to happen on Locked On Wolverines, that's when this kind of recruiting boom started for Michigan. That's when they started getting all these guys, and then. Um, somebody else came out, was it the uh, Hinsky, the rivals guy, he came out and said something. And around that same time, Ivan Taylor, the star safety that was committed to Notre Dame, he commits to, or he decommits from Notre Dame, flips to Michigan instead. And so then you have that situation going on. And then now you have a little bit of this bad news coming out. And so then there's possibly some, uh, uneasy players out there. I, it just... If this starts affecting recruiting, that's going to be, like I said, where this kind of hurts because right now the coaches don't know what to defend against. They don't know yeah. what to say. Hey, it's going to be okay. You can still come to Michigan and we can yep. still battle, win championships, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a really good point. I, I didn't think about how the uncertainty – the uncertainty does really affect Michigan right now. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. Well, Zach, let's just go ahead and get straight into the article. Uh, first things first, we will go the very first uh, two paragraphs here. And I'm going to bring these up, guys, but they are going to cover up our faces. So I'm not going to have them for a while. So if you uh, if you want to see them as we're going, I guess, screenshot them or something. Like that while we're going. <laughs> or if you're listening on the podcast, you can just trust our words or look up, uh, look it up the article on ESPN and follow along. So, all right, here's the first part. And this part is talking talking about Sharon Moore and how he uh, deleted the text messages between him and Connor Stallions the day of uh, all this information coming out, which is at, which was like at midnight or something like that. I remember <laughs> all this stuff came out and I woke up the next morning. And I was like, oh my gosh, what blew up on Twitter uh, at like 1 a.m.? And of course it was uh, Pete Thamel's very first report on some of this stuff. Well, Sharon Moore apparently deleted 52 text messages from uh, former Michigan staffer Connor Stallions and himself. Later on, uh, those texts were recovered through device imaging and Moore did produce them for the enforcement staff. So this whole idea that Moore deleted them and they've never seen them, that is false. Uh, but it does say, uh, I'll bring this back up really fast, Moore is accused of committing a level two violation according to the draft. We're not sure if that means that the text messages are a level two violation or if the fact that he deleted them and didn't produce them right away is a level two violation. I tend to believe the latter. Uh, Zach, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I. you were saying that you think it was the deleting and not the content, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, I. I the, the further we get into the article, I think that's going to paint maybe the broader picture. But I, I think it's more the hiding and the, yeah. the, the deleting, um, which if you look, if you look on the NCAA website, level two violations, they're a significant breach of conduct and the, the number the, or the, the bullet points under that it's violations that do not rise to the level level one violations. So level one is the most severe level two is the second most severe. It's like significant, I think is what they yeah. call it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Significant. It's, uh, yeah, severe and significant. Um, yeah. And the, 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 the label to recognize there from like old school NCAA violations is failure to monitor. Mm -hmm. And it's, 
it's it's in that realm of we were deleting things we're getting rid of information you're not monitoring your program well yes. which i believe that's what jim trestle got nailed for yes i believe so too so if if just for michigan fans who are like oh like that's not that big of a deal jim trestle got fired got a five-year show cause and ohio state got a you know, a year bowl ban and reduction of scholarships for that. And vacated wins. And, yeah, and vacated wins. For a level two violation, for a failure yes. to monitor. It was not lack of institutional control, which is what level one is, which is what everything else is. Right. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And, <laughs> like, I've seen I've seen some Michigan fans talking about how unfair ESPN is being to them. And, and, and I totally get where Michigan fans are coming yes. from. You see yeah, the cut yeah, back yeah. there. You know, I'm an Ohio State fan myself. Uh, and, and far from me to sympathize with Michigan fans. Uh, I've never <laughs> wanted to do that before in my life, but I feel like I can a little bit here. Like, please understand, this is what ESPN does if you're a Big Ten team. Like, this, yeah. this is what they will do. If you are a Big Ten team, ESPN has no use for you. You are the enemy. They will try to pound you into the ground as much as they possibly can. That's why, personally, I wonder how much of this article is actually true. I tend to believe it is just because ESPN's not been wrong so far on this stuff. However, at the same time, I know their intentions are against the Big Ten, so I'm like... You know, could this be right? Could this be wrong? Who knows? Um, but at the end of the day, like, this is what ESPN wants to do. They they are going to try to bury you. They are very much so against you. I don't know if in the NCAA is. Uh, maybe they are. I tend to think maybe they're not too happy uh, because they've been kind of shown up a little bit and you know, with kind of all the Connor Stallions love. And I get not every Michigan fan is doing that. I'm just saying it's been kind of prevalent a little bit uh, to where people have been seeing that. So um, I guess my thought process in all of this is like ESPN is going to do what they can to try to bury you. It sucks. I get it. Nobody wants that to happen uh, in your fan base, but it's just the reality of the news media where we sit today. And, you know, yep. it, it, yeah, like I said, they're, they're going to try to bury you. It just, it is what it is. Yeah. And aside from Desmond, uh, who, uh, you know, yeah, Desmond will fight for you. Yeah. Uh, whether he's, you know, looks like an idiot doing it or not. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry. I, 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 for all the, the folks that are, I, and I think Michigan fans know, I, I've really, I have been very slow. I think both of us have been very slow to, talk about Michigan in a negative light, despite, despite both of us being Ohio state fans. Yeah. Um, it got a little crazy uh, last week when I had Chris and uh, <laughs> Eric on um, Eric may have started yelling at some of the commenters <laughs> at one point. <laughs> I was just trying to smile and be like, don't, don't associate me with this. I'm not trying to uh, scream at my commenters right now. <laughs> I feel like what you're saying is that I should never go on a month long hiatus again. And like, I, I, I needed to be there for the voice of reason with you. <laughs> <laughs> you could have certainly been a voice of reason, uh, in that room. Stop no, I, Eric. I, no, don't do it. No, I loved having those guys on, and, and okay. they were definitely passionate, and that's what <laughs> this show's about. Uh, Amen. You know, and I'm sure there were Michigan fans that didn't like listening to it, but you know, hey, it's uh, that's the fun of it all. All right, let's move on to the next part here. Next paragraph here, Zach Moore, who took over as the Wolverines head coach in January. They're saying here that he was the offensive coordinator in his considered a potential repeat violator because Zach remember back in uh, August is or yeah it was August when it came down last year that Michigan was going to self-impose a suspension for Sharon Moore and now coming out of this they still are in probation for the uh, recruiting violations, Burger Gate, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And so they're looking at Sharon Moore as being a possible repeat violator in this situation, which would only make whatever punishments there are for him worse. Yeah. I mean, earlier in the article, it talked about he could be looking at a suspension. He could be looking at a show cause. Zach, I mean, if Sharon Moore gets, let's say, minimum one year show cause, is Sharon Moore still the coach of Michigan after this year? I mean, what are your thoughts? It's, that's an interesting question because on one hand, I think there's a question of who do you get that's better at this 
at this juncture, particularly with impending punishment coming down, which we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about more. Um, even with Sharon Moore getting a one-year suspension, it still gives you stability. You know who you know who who is there. You know that the culture is still built. At the same time, though, is that going to derail the culture in such a way that you have a, a coach who was found guilty of all these violations and of repeat violations? Does Michigan want to be associated with that? It's hard because up to this point, Michigan has kind of been like, you know, the whole bet stuff. It's like, okay, fine. Michigan against everybody. Um, which, you know, you know, in the midst of the season, again, I think some, some opposing fans really go after them and be like, you guys are so tone deaf, but like, I can understand the players, especially in the midst of the season. Like, Hey, we're going to bet on ourselves. We're going to finish the season out. We're going to, we're going to win the national championship but there also weren't NCAA imposed things other than probation at that point. Right now it's, you know, it's, I think it's similar. Like, you know, I keep going back to the Ohio state 2011 scandal. Um, Ohio state was very much willing to st stick with Jim Tressel until it became very apparent that that would not be good for their image. Right. And, so I, I'm verbally processing this. I, I can see a pathway for both. I, I would think that at some point, Michigan will awaken to the reality that the perception of this is really ugly. Yep. If he gets suspended, if he gets a year long show cause. Yep. And like th they would part ways, but there has been nothing to this point that Michigan has done that suggests they will actually do that. Yeah, because they don't want to admit fault, right? I mean, yeah. everything we've heard from them has been, if you do anything other than fine us, then we are going to sue you. Which, Zach, this is a fa fascinating conversation for us to have, and I don't know if we want to have it now, but the NCAA loses in court every single time they go to court. <laughs> and I mean, it's true. Look at... <laughs> Look at when they go. They lose every time. Uh, and I don't know if people know this, but one of the reasons why they lose in court every single time is because they're not the government. They can't yeah. go into court and say, give us all your emails, give us all this, give us all that. Like the government, they have a trump card. Uh, I'm not getting political here. <laughs> Sorry, they have they have a card they can play that says, give us all of your information. It's going to become public. Now, could there, you know come information from Michigan by going to court that maybe could make things worse. Certainly there could, but if Michigan does this the right way, they could go to court against the NCAA and they could find themselves to win because the NCAA might not have enough of the information that they need to really say this has for sure happened, right? They might be able to say Connor Stallions bought tickets to these games, but they're going to, you know, the jury is going to say, well, did you see Connor Stallions there? Oh, no, he gave money to this guy. Was he there? Was she there? Uh, were they recording with their phone? Were they recording with a big, huge camera? You know, like, were they just taking notes? Like, I mean, this stuff could get much, much deeper. I'm not going to speculate on who would win or lose, but I could definitely see a path where if Michigan does this the right way, they could go to the court and they could find themselves winning and the NCAA could find themselves in another situation where they've lost in court again. It has happened before. It will happen again. <laughs> and this is the part of the show where we queue up the advertisement for our new NCAA stinks t-shirt. Hey, I oh, said that in the last episode. I thought you might be proud. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, it's going to happen. Um, but I, I mean, I, and, and I'm hesitant to talk about Michigan taking the NCAA to court because that's what we heard uh, when, you know, the Jim Harbaugh suspension was impending was, you know, oh, Michigan is going to take the Big Ten to court if the Big Ten tries to do anything. And the whole thought process there was, well, you can try, but you're not going to win because what you signed in the Big Ten bylaws allows for the Big Ten to do this, whether they have full proof or not, yeah. they have the ability to do this. So opening yeah. yourselves up for uh oh what's it called um 
truth telling or whatever it's called. I can't remember the legal term, but uh, open yourself for investigation or whatever it is. That's yeah. not what you want to do, especially in a situation where it was the Big Ten, where they were only going to suspend Jim Harbaugh for a few games at most. Yeah, well, and I that 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 raises another question. There's two two thoughts that that raises, Jr. One, the NCAA, like the NCAA, in, in a lot of ways, is opening them themselves up to do they actually have power and authority, right? Which no one has ever really challenged them on. Like Ohio, like I keep bringing the 2011 situation from Ohio State because I think there's some similarities to it. I know Ohio State fans will get very angry at me for saying that, comparing them because but and there's there a lot are. of I mean, if you, if you look at it rationally, there are yeah. Michigan fans don't want you to say it. Ohio State fans don't want you to say it. But if you can look at it rationally, there are very many similarities between yeah. these two situations. Now, the intentions of Jim Trussell might be completely different, which that's another podcast for another time. Um, but yeah, I and that's why I keep bringing it up. Like, I think Ohio State could have really fought the NCAA back in 2011. But like, that wasn't the, like, the in vogue thing to do. Like, right. you're like, let me how do I avoid the worst penalty? Well, let's just cooperate. And that has proven time and time again to really bite programs in the butt which is dumb. It's like honesty and grace. Like you still need penalties and you still need to enforce right. the rules, but it's like, man, like it always seemed like the teams that resisted the most actually got the leanest penalties. Right. Whereas the, the teams that cooperated actually got the hammer. And you're like, this is. And so I, I feel like Michigan, if they do sue the NCAA, it, it's going to be a referendum on what actually can the NCAA do and not do, which I might, might further put the nail in the coffin for them. That being said, you mentioned the Big Ten. There's a whole lot of coaches in the Big Ten that want to know, did this really happen? And, and I made this point uh, on, on the – I'm going to drop an episode of the Big Ten Football Talk tomorrow morning. Well, I guess this is going live – uh, Monday morning. Yeah. And this is going live Monday morning too. So. Yeah. So we're, yeah. Well, multiple, multiple podcasts on this. Um, <laughs> but like Ryan day would love nothing more than to know that he has zero losses against Michigan because you know what he's really good at front running. Yep. And if he can say, I've never lost, I have no pressure. Like you think that team's not going to win by four touchdowns this <laughs> this fall with that raw, if, if especially with all the turmoil going on, um, and they're not able to you know steal signs like that. Like there's vested interest. Him, Jonathan Smith, James Franklin, Kirk Ferentz. Like these guys want Michigan to crumble if this really happened, and they will go to Tony Petiti. And you know those programs have a lot of clout. That's gonna be a that that's gonna be I think the bigger issue is if the NCAA botches it, which let's be honest, it's very possible that they will. What what's the rest of the Big Ten gonna do? Are they gonna just take it like stand there and take it, or are they gonna actually go after it too? Yeah, no, I I, I think that you make some very good points there. Um, if if Michigan goes on the defense and just says, don't come after us, you know, help us, whatever, then I think that they're screwed. If they go on the offense and they say, we're going to come after you, like you said, programs that go against the NCAA and don't play their games oftentimes end up in better situations than ones who do. That's why a lot of Ohio State fans get as angry as they do with Ohio State and their compliance department and how ever since Jim Tressel, they're like, well, we're just going to report everything and tell the NCAA everything, any little thing we do. And they're like, just get away with it and hide it. Because if you do tell them, they're going to actually give you a penalty. Whereas if you don't tell them, they're never going to know, which yeah. You know, we, we can argue here about honesty and integrity and, and that kind of stuff, which I think is honorable. But at the same time, like, it's also a game where you're trying to get the advantage, you know? So I'm not saying be dishonest, but I am saying that, you know, I can see where fans are coming from that get upset about yeah. that. Yeah. Speaking of some of that stuff, let's go to the next paragraph here where I think a lot more about that. Um, 
All right, so former Michigan staffers Jim Harbaugh, Chris Partridge, Denard Robinson, and Connor Stallions are all accused of committing level one violations. That is a whole heck of a lot, level one violations there, Zach. I don't know if I've ever heard of four staff members, or I guess these are all former staff members, um, being four level one violations. Maybe maybe it's more common than I think. But uh, but anyway, so the, the whole thing with this paragraph that I think was the most interesting, and I want your thoughts on this, Zach, but the part in the middle where it says the school also faces, okay, so this isn't just talking about the coaches. This is saying the school yeah. also faces a level one violation charge, according to the draft, because of its pattern of non-compliance within the football program and institutional efforts to hinder or thwart NCAA's investigation. I love that word, thwart. That's a fun <laughs> word. Um, but... That, to me, is one of the most impactful parts of this entire thing. And it's actually what I named the show uh, after because I thought it was the most impactful thing. Because if you go over to the NCAA bylaws, here it says, Finally, failure to cooperate, lack of institutional control, and failure to monitor are among the most serious allegations. All right. So, Zach, let's go back to the other one really fast. Pattern of non-compliance within the football program and institutional efforts to hinder or thwart the NCAA investigation. Let's go back to the other one. Failure to cooperate, lack of institutional control, and failure to monitor are among the most serious allegations. Zach, you tell me. Words aren't exactly the same, but you tell me. Does that level one violation against the school, pattern of non-compliance, right, uh, institutional efforts to thwart the NCAA's investigations. Does that sound the same as failure to cooperate, lack of institutional control, or failure to monitor in All the, the above. bylaws? All, the, All above. the above. Wow. Well, and this is why, you know, I think we we're talking about how the NCAA might be in trouble here if they would get sued. This is the one point where I actually think Michigan is, is actually screwed because yeah. it doesn't say that, that the level one, the level one violation is illegal advanced scouting. It says the, the level one violation is a pattern of non-compliance, which that is easily provable. Oh like yeah. Easily. Yeah. 100%. And so if, and that lack of institutional control is the biggest issue that the NCAA has, like bar none, like you lie, you're done. And what has Michigan done the past couple years with recruiting, you know, and again, regardless, like, I think I was on this show. I thought Burger Gate was stupid. Oh, yeah. It was so dumb. We but talked about that and how stupid it was. And even the punishments yeah. we talked about were like, this is this dumb. Is it, it was ironically a nothing burger. Um, but the problem with it was they lied about it. They like tried to explain it away. And they've done this over and over and over again. The NCAA can prove that in spades. And so if in their bylaws, that is the most problematic issue then we're not like we're not even talking about Sangi anymore. We're talking about a pattern of deception and lying, regardless of what you think about the violations. That's where I think Michigan is in the most trouble. And that's why I think the NCAA has to do something. Because if the NCAA doesn't do anything when they've been lied to over and over and over again, and they said four coaches, including the head coach, and the whole school is under this level one violation and their current head coach is a level two. Like at that point, like what, if you don't drop the hammer, then your words mean nothing. And so at this point, this is not me arguing as an Ohio state fan or as a Michigan, like advocate for Michigan or anything. I'm just looking by the letter of the law or the letter of the bylaws. Like if Michigan doesn't drop the hammer, then they might as, you know, again, coin a phrase that we've said on the show, they might as well go the way of the dinosaur because they've become, 
they've been become become hypocrites for not enforcing their own laws. Yeah, and I mean, just to be honest with people, like if this is your first time tuning in, like yes, Zach and I are both Ohio State fans, and and we tell you that because we know that the two of us look at college football pretty objectively i'm not going to say we don't have any bias because everybody has bias i 100 percent believe that if you think there's anybody you listen to that doesn't have bias you are probably agreeing with their bias and that's why you don't think they have any um everybody has bias it, it is what it is but i think both zach and i can do a good job of separating ourselves from the conversation or from the situation and have a conversation that is realistic and not totally from an Ohio state lens where it's like, yeah, screw Michigan. They suck. And all this stuff, because at the end of the day, I'm literally reading you what it says. The school yeah. also faces level one violation charge for pattern of non-compliance within the football program, institutional efforts to hinder or thwart the NCAA investigation. And then failure to cooperate, lack of institutional control and failure to monitor are among the most serious of allegations. Like, I keep seeing Michigan fans and others, not just Michigan fans, say, well, they don't actually have any dirt on us. There's nothing in this report that actually proves what Connor Stallions did. And my message to them every single time has been, that would be better if they were saying, here's what Connor Stallions did. Mm -hmm. According to their bylaws, which you're exactly right, Zach, they could completely flop this. I mean, which... You know, on par for the NCAA. <laughs> That's actually probably what will happen. But <laughs> yes. if the NCAA follows their own bylaws, that's you would rather have them talking about the proof of Connor Stallion stole signs and all this stuff. No, what they're talking about instead is the most serious of allegations where you're lying the NCAA, where you're not cooperating, lack of institutional control. You're not giving them what they want. And in fact, you are not just not giving them what they want, but you are actively working against what they want. I mean, Connor Stallions is going out and doing a freaking Netflix documentary to talk about a story. And I guarantee you, he's going to share more with that Netflix documentary than he has shared or will share with the NCAA. Again, they are going to look at this. <laughs> if they are true, if they are truly not a doormat, they're going to look at this and say, what the heck? You know, they're, they're going to look at Connor Stallions and say, you, you are going to talk to them and get paid for a documentary, but you're not going to talk to us, the governing body of college football, which is actually a joke. They're not the governing body at all, yeah. but that's what they think of themselves as. And so yeah. that is really where the struggle is at right now. By the letter of the law, Michigan is screwed. But yeah. if the NCAA screws up like they have so many times before, <laughs> then they'll be fine. I mean, that's just, yeah, I, I'm not wrong here. What, right, Zach? I mean, no. that's the way it's looking. And that that's why I think, this is, I, and I know Michigan fans or and Ohio State fans may not like me saying this. This decision is much more about the NCAA than it is about Michigan. Because, oh, yeah. because, there. and the reason why, like, it, even if they blast Michigan back to the Stone Age, which I think is on the table, like, I think. They're not going to go death penalty. I've said that no, multiple times. Yeah, yeah. They're not they going to death penalty Michigan. There's yeah. too much money in, in yeah. their program. But like, and I think this year they're, they're fine. Like, yeah. you know, 90 days, you know, they have 90 days. They might get a bull ban for this year. Yeah. Maybe. Not. Yeah. But I think, I think the uncertainty is the worst thing for 2024. I think 25 through 27 is where I think they could get hit. But here's, here's the reality. How much longer does the NCAA have any pull in the world of college football? And this case, it, it's either going to be the thing that extends their, their tenure and kind of bleeds a slow death, or it's going to be the thing that, that puts the nail in the coffin. Because if they get this wrong, which let's, you know, we've been on this show many times. And like this show has only been around for a year. How many times have we made fun of the NCAA in a year? We could go back 25, 30 years about how bad this organization has been. Like 
and this could be it could be the thing that kills it because they make either they make the wrong decision or they prove they don't have power or you know or it gets tied up for years because again a lawsuit will do that it'll tie it up for years and years like at least two three maybe four um which at that point it's like okay what are we even doing anymore and i think that's why are we even govern governing if we don't actually have any power and can't actually make anything happen yeah well and i think and someone made the point on twitter and i think it's a good one even if they get a postseason ban even if they get scholarship reductions which with nil it really doesn't mean anything unless they get rid of walk-ons which i hope that doesn't happen (laughs) that would be awful get me started on that conversation again um uh, but the, the reality is the NCAA screwed this up when they took so long to decide whether Michigan was eligible for this year's national championship. Like the reality is like vacated wins. No, no offense. Aside from Ryan day and James Franklin, who gives a rip? We saw the game. Yeah. Like they're the champs. And like, I don't care how many asterisks you put there. They won the national championship. They're still going to have the clips to be able to play on social media. They're still going to have all the memories of when they watched it happen on TV or they were present for the game itself. I mean, you you can't take memories away. That's what I've said this entire time. And that was where the NCAA really showed how little of power they do have right now when – all of this stuff started coming out in October. I mean, it was October. It's not like this was late November, but all this stuff started coming out in October and the NCAA had an entire month to deal with it. And they said, no, Tony Petiti, you can suspend Jim Harbaugh. We'll let you do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you'd be the, you'd be the main villain of uh, Michigan right now. Um, because at the end of the day, I mean, they, they, they were tied. They had their hands tied with yeah. their own bylaws and the way things work. Um, and now they're in a situation where they have to use their bylaws. Um, otherwise, they they have proven to just be nothing, be a complete yeah. doormat, and nobody will be ever be afraid of them again. Nobody yeah. will ever listen to their rules again because it won't matter. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. The next section of the story here. A little bit of a longer section, so I'll, uh, I'm not going to read any of it. But essentially, this section is um, s- says that investigators use ticketing information, film, t- t- photographs, and interviews to determine that Stallions had impermissible had had impermissibly scouted at least 13 future Michigan opponents on at least 58 occasions between 2021 and 2023. Zach. 58 games, which you could scout two two teams if you go to the right games. 58 occasions where Connor Stallion sent somebody in three years. What's that average out to? Like 20 a year? Yeah, it's 19, 19 and a third a year. Yeah. yeah. So that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and Not, I don't think they were doing that much in 2021 right when it started. So just yeah. imagine how much they were doing it in 2022. And then it only happened for half a season in 2023. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, imagine how many of those were in 2022 alone. And and not one of them was TCU. <laughs> actually, you know what? If you look at the 13 page letter, this, this is actually really funny. Uh, if you're not a Michigan fan, or if you're a Michigan fan, it's not funny. Um, for me, <laughs> this is where my bias comes into play. If you look at the 13-page letter that Tony Petiti sent out, the TCU game was one of the games that he confirmed they had the signs of. Are you uh, serious? TCU. He confirmed. Go read the 13-page letter. Actually, I don't know if you can read it anymore. Big Ten took it off their website. I downloaded it. <laughs> I figured they'd take it away at some point. So I have the 13-page letter, uh, and I'll go back to it from time to time just to refresh myself so that way I'm not speaking you know, uh, incorrectly about it. But, um, but yeah, TCU was one of the games. The reason why, or at least this is the rumor, the reason why it was such a hard time is because the coaches – or some coaches doesn't specify who went to Sonny Dykes and told him what was going on and said, yeah, Michigan has your signs. You need to change all of your signs. Well, in a week, it's very hard for a college football team to change all their signs. I know that all these players seem like they're the brightest kids in the world. They're not. 
Um, I love college football and I love that a lot of these kids get the chance to go to college. But I mean, when you have your classes on top of trying to learn football on top of trying to be out on the practice field, learning brand new signs, I mean, they're not going to take an entire day of practice and just learn new signs. Right. But over a month period from the end of the season to, you know, the bowl game, you do have a month where you can figure that stuff out and you're not in school for the entire time. And so they were able to change the signs was this is at least the rumor. And so that is what got Michigan in more trouble. If you recognize it at the end of the game, they started to get better again. This is all rumors, but they started to get better. And that was the idea was TCU changed their signs enough in the first half and into the third quarter a little bit that Michigan was still guessing. But by the time it got to the fourth quarter, Michigan had figured it out and they were doing better. So, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Again, that's the rumor. I'm I'm not saying I believe it. I'm just saying that's what it is. But the true part is that they did in fact have TCU signs for the 2022 game, which is crazy. But yeah. Well, and to go back to what you were, I mean, 58 and they have the paper trail. And the interviews and the film and the photography. I mean, that's yeah, one thing there. that, yeah, that, that's one thing they don't talk about a lot is like how much security cam footage is in these stadiums. And if you knew you were wronged, right? If Ohio State knew they were wronged, guess what? NCAA, take all the security footage you want, all of it. You know, yeah. I mean, you don't have to twist an arm and a leg to get Ohio State to give you the security cam footage of their games yeah. where they believe that somebody was scouting them. Um, also in that portion of the article, it says that a certain team was in fact scouted seven times in 2022. Zach, I will give you one guess as to who the <laughs> team that they scouted seven times was. In it was totally, totally Indiana. Yeah, it, totally. Well, I think yeah. they played them too early in the year. Yeah, it's Ohio State. I, actually, no, was that the, then or 2023 where they played them earlier? Anyway, uh, um, it's, it's Ohio State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, like, I mean, this this does have to be another piece of it, right? I mean, where it's, it's not just that they're getting in trouble for not complying, but that is another area that they're bringing out in this article that they have proof and they have evidence that, yes, so. you did send people to these games. We can argue about the rule all we want, but the NCAA says you sent people to these games, they recorded, and they brought it back to you illegal in-person scouting yep oh yeah well and it's regardless of what people say about well it doesn't give an advantage it doesn't take all that away objectively did they break the rule is there evidence that they broke the rule yes and yes and they did it several times we don't we don't and again the, the the draft does not talk about how much Harbaugh knew, how much Sharon Moore knew. It doesn't say that. So we're not like, we're not getting into that. All we're saying is this happened. It happened a lot and none of it was above board. And they lied about it. Right. And that's another piece of it. I'm trying to look back on deflate gate and what the punishments were for that do you remember what the punishments were for that Zach? Brady, i think was suspended four games and they lost the first round draft pick i think that was it i mean let's be honest for a second does deflating a football a tiny little pressure points does that really give you that much of an advantage in a game like this seems more like a preference thing mm-hmm. and so if you're looking at it and saying well it didn't really do all that much that's not what the NFL said. The NFL, and I get it, the NFL and the NCAA are different, but they looked at it and they said, sure, this only impacts one player on the field who is throwing the ball. Maybe it impacts the receivers catching the ball, but this really only impacts one player on the field who's throwing the ball. Everything else is the same. Yep. And four game suspension for that player, lose a draft pick, first round draft pick for the yeah. entire team. Like, they were also the, the severity of how much the cheating helped you does not impact. I mean, to the NCAA, to the NFL, it does not impact what the punishment yeah. is because at the end of the day, it's how much you broke the rule, not how much does the rule help you. Yeah. They, the Patriots were also fined a million dollars and they lost a fourth round pick the following year. 
Oh, okay. So, so like, two, yeah. Two picks. And and Brady was suspended without pay. So, which Tom I'm Brady sure makes a lot. Yeah. But, well, but you think about it, like, that's a quarter of his game checks. You know, he's making, what, $40 million a year or something like that? Like, that's yeah. 10, like... I don't know how what his contract was, but we're talking about at least several million dollars. Yeah. So was he hurting? Probably not. But like if you think about the significance of millions of dollars in fines and, and lost money, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, that's what Michigan wants, is they just want to be fined. Like that, yeah. And I think that they know that if that happens, they'll pay it off and you know, they'll they'll cut something if they have to and they'll pay it off um yeah. and then they'll bring it back in the two years once they've replenished the money i mean that's just how this stuff works yeah. um so and i think that has been stuff that you don't want out there either if you're michigan because now if you're the ncaa you you're, you know like oh we can't just find these guys <laughs> that's what they want <laughs> you know like so uh all right let's go to the next part here i'm gonna try to keep this under an hour but <laughs> promising right now. Uh, the investigators also allege that multiple team interns and at least one other full-time employee, full-time team employee knew about the scheme and participated in it. Zach, you tell me if I'm wrong. That doesn't sound like a coach. That sounds like, you know, somebody who was like in Denard Robinson's role uh, mm -hmm. before he got fired, just like a full-time team employee. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I don't think this is a, you know, this was Sean Moore or something like that. Yeah. Like, so I, saw, I saw some people saying that and I'm like, no, it's, I don't think that's the same thing. Um, and it says that stallions led them to believe that they were doing nothing wrong. Well, I mean, Zach, you tell me, could it be a lack of institutional control? If not, everybody in your football program knows the rules yeah. of what your football program should be doing. Yeah. There's a, there's a great film, uh, a few good men. Uh, Tom Cruise, Jack Nicholson. It's the it's the film that you know ja Jack Nicholson's. Uh, Tom Cruise is like, I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. But the 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 end of the movie, and I'm okay with spoiling it because it's a 32 year old movie. So spoiler. You record. haven't seen it by now. You're probably not gonna see it. Yeah. Um, but the the two uh, Sar uh, Marines were charged. It seemed like they were gonna be cleared. But at the end, they're actually found guilty. And the one guy, he goes to him, is like, what? We did nothing wrong. We did nothing wrong. And the, the, the other guy's like, no, we did. Like, yes, we carried out the orders under someone else's supervision, but we should have known better. And it's like, yeah, like just because you did the thing and you were told it was wrong, it wasn't wrong. Like you're still like, it's still on you to figure out whether it is right or wrong. And like, that's what that is like. And so even, you know, we were talking off air, like Sean Moore, you know, the, the 52, 58 text thread that he deleted. Um, if he just deleted it because there was things in there and he realized at the 11th hour, oh, this was all not above board. Oh no. And he gets rid of it. And people could be like, well, but Sharon Moore, and I'm not saying that's what it is, by the way, I, I'm just giving a hypothetical but like people are like, well, Cheryl Moore didn't really know. It's like, but he should have figured it out. Like he's he's your offensive coordinator. You're paid a lot of money to do things the way that, you know, in, in line with the bylaws, you got to figure it out. And if you don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I, and I do think, you know, um, like it, it's totally possible to find some of this information on like all 22 footage. Now, can you find all of it? No. Can you find some of it? Yes. Can no. you find some of it on TV copies of games? Yes. Can you find some of it on some other stuff here and there, just from watching the games during the game? Of course. But nobody has been able to find that information as quickly and as efficiently as Connor Stallions did. And I can see Sharon Moore saying, this kid's genius. And he's helping us out more than we could ever thank him for. And just not really thinking about it. I could see him doing that. 
but you're exactly right that just because they didn't think about doing it doesn't mean that they aren't involved with it because everybody has a responsibility of doing the right thing by the team and by the players. If your player is showing up late to all these practices, you can just say, oh yeah, sure. We're going to punish them and tell them to do better. Good coaches will take it a step further and say, what's going on in this kid's life? What mm-hmm. can I do for this kid? You know, is there something going on behind the scenes? And they dig. Similar situation here. You look yeah. at the situation and you're, and this is now this is the opposite where things are really, really good. But you say, what is going on here? How is he able to get this stuff so quickly? Nobody is able to steal signs this quickly. Yeah. Brent Venables mastered stealing signs when he was at Clemson, and he still didn't even know the plays until late into the second quarter, early third quarter. I mean, if yeah. you if you listen to any of the stuff where they talk about that and read that stuff, Brent Venables, like the entire first quarter, first quarter was just identifying who is giving the signs. Yeah. Connor Stallions already had that at the very beginning of the yep. game. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, well, I, I was going to say one thing that the article does confirm too, is that Connor Stallions is on the central Michigan sideline. Yeah. I, that's the next part. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'll just say it really quick. Uh, Connor Stallions was on the central Michigan sideline and coaching gear in a disguise. He was wearing a wig and a hat Obviously, he had the sunglasses, which we were, we can presume uh, had a recording function in them. Uh, the draft does not say how Stallions obtained a bench pass for the Chippewas sidelines. If you've been following the stuff, the Chippewas did fire their quarterback coach who has connections to Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. Um, what was it? Just like a week ago. So, you know, put two and two together. It's not proof. It's not anything concrete, but. I think a rational mind could, you know, put those two things together. Yeah. Uh, But go ahead. What were you going to say, Zach? Well, I was going to say, I think everything that we're saying, if it's not already fire, it's more smoke. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I mean, there's just, there's more to it that is just making it engulfed. And it's, it's all leading to the fact that there's not been any cooperation. I shouldn't say not any co- cooperation. There's not been enough cooperation for the NCAA, uh, yeah. in their opinion. All right, next part. I feel like uh, we don't really need to spend too much on the Central Michigan sideline because we kind of already knew that. Um, <laughs> right. If you have any more thoughts on it, you can say them, Zach. But mm-hmm. yeah, okay. Um, all right, next part here. Uh, Connor Stallions failed to cooperate with its investigation, and he removed hard drives from the Michigan football offices in. It, this all happened in October 2023 and also gave football players a sheet containing playing call and signals of a future opponent. It said Stallions asked for the player to bring sheets to the team's intern house. Could he uh, until he could retrieve it later? Stallions also refused to let the school review his phone. According to the draft, Stallions has yet to publicly share many details with his side of the story, but he is expected to do an interview in an upcoming Netflix documentary for the scheme. Again, this is what I'm getting at. Like Connor Stallions is being more forthright with Netflix than he has been with the NCAA, than he has been with a school, all these different things. Yeah. And that has to just grind the NCAA's gears. <laughs> I, there's so many ethical issues with this. Um I'll just, I mean, I, I can, from a utilitarian standpoint, I'm not arguing for this philosophy, but like, all right, Netflix is going to pay you. The NCAA isn't, they're going to fine you. They're going to punish you. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it, it's, it's a sad state of affairs to, for everybody involved, quite honestly, that the way we're going to find more out and it's going to be the biased view um, is going to be through a Netflix documentary. Like, you think just, the CIA is waiting to put out their no- their notice of allegations until the documentary comes out? <laughs> like, hold on, guys. I, let's let's just watch this first, just to be sure. We don't want to look like idiots and put out a notice of allegations and then miss some stuff that was in Netflix. If they wait for the Netflix, I'm going to ask Netflix to take over college football. 
<laughs> they're the new governing body. Like, oh my, and I, I, I'm somewhat facetious because I don't think I want Netflix touching anything. Um, but that's how incompetent the NCAA has been. <laughs> Sorry, you can continue your thought. That just made no. Me that was that was the just, NCAA that was in enforcement committee is like going to have a you know a watch party. <laughs> uh, like, all right, guys, everybody, get your notepads out. Yeah, hey, have no pad, no pad in one hand and a beer in the other. All right, let's go. Let's <laughs> order pizza. <laughs> oh man, uh, is Counter Stallions here? Is he going to watch it with us? Yeah. Hey, I'm not going to talk to you guys, but I'll, I'll come to the party and watch it <laughs> just, just to see your reaction. Um, Zach, what do you make of the hard drives? I mean, that seems to me to be a very uh, suspicious piece there. Uh, again, nothing mm. really concrete and proof, but kind of like the text messages. It's like, if you're not guilty, why are you getting rid of information? Why yep. are you hiding things? Yep. Yeah, it's... I yeah, I mean, as we go through this, it's just like, man, it it everything paints a picture of something not good. Like, and I like, I feel like I don't need to comment any more on that. It's like, yeah, no, I, you know, yeah. Uh, all right, so it takes a little bit of a turn. Here's toward the end. Let's start talking about Chris Partridge, the former linebackers coach. Uh, former defensive assistant who was fired by Michigan last November was accused of pressuring a player to lie or mislead NCAA investigators in an effort to protect the coaching staff during the probe into Connor Stallion's scheme, according to the draft. Um, Jack, Chris Partridge has come out and said that this was not why he was fired. However, it's interesting that the notice of allegations draft would put it in there, mm-hmm. even if he said he's not. Um, do you believe that Chris Partridge's testimony could sway the NCAA to take this out? Or in your opinion, are you like, nope, it's in there and they're not buying what Partridge is saying? Uh, it, it's hard because I've heard some more nefarious things having to do with Chris Partridge's uh, dismissal. And I would think and maybe I'm I've misheard that. I say those were all rumors though. Those weren't Yeah. Those weren't it, fact. Right? Well, it could be fact. I'm just saying that like yeah. they're not in I, the notice of allegations writing. Right. Well, and and the reason I I like it's interesting that he would come out and defend like and say that that's not true but not say that the other things aren't true because I feel like those things are much worse. Yeah. Um so I don't I don't know what to make of it. It's it's hard because it's it's he said she said at that point, and I I could see I could see the draft getting rid of it just because it's not as clear cut. There are some things in here that are very clear cut. This one seems debated. Well, and it seems so minor, yeah. right? I mean, compared to all the other stuff that you have, and we're going to get into some small little recruiting things that are probably the most minor things in here. Yeah. Um, but it all just seems so minor compared I, to the rest of it. One, one thought, sorry, as you were saying that it is minor, it does add to the narrative of lack of institutional control because of the lie, like pressuring someone. That's to true. Lie. I will say that they did fire him though. So, you know, if that happened, then there could be like a, argument there that like we do have control we fired him when we figured yeah it out. that's a good but, point but i see what you're saying too that like you had this going on mm-hmm. and you yeah i don't know you allowed it i guess i guess you didn't allow it because you fired him yeah or but, you didn't you didn't get you you got rid of him but you didn't get rid of everybody else yeah yeah so all right last part here uh and then we'll give our quick thoughts on punishment here at the end, Partridge, Clink, Seattle, and Robinson were all accused of providing impermissible benefits to recruits in 2023. I mean, these are all small little things. Um, they paid for meals. Clink scale wrote a hundred dollar golf charity check. Um, <laughs> Clink scale helped a recruit get verified on Instagram. Why is that? <laughs> 
That seems so stupid. Oh, I don't know. I've never been verified on Instagram, but it seems really stupid. Uh, and Jesse Minter, uh, or Partridge and former defensive coordinator Jesse Minter are accused of level two violations for sending text messages to a recruit who was a high school sophomore. And obviously, uh, there's different uh, rules for different ages uh, in high school and recruits and things like that. So, um, Zach, any thoughts on these minor recruiting? I mean, that is a level two for Jesse Minter and Chris Partridge. So, yeah. but it doesn't seem like that would reflect on the school. That seems like that would just be on them. Well, I, I again, I think it's it's narrative building, right? Like it's repeated offenses, repeat violators, culture of. I think because I think you're right. Uh, by itself, these are just. It's like, why is this in here? But I think I think the NCAA is building a narrative. Uh, they're essentially building well, at least their case. ESPN is. ESPN yeah. is building a narrative. Yeah, that's tr- that. Yeah, and I think that's the NCAA is is hearkening like this is this is a culture problem. It's not a uh, it's not a one off. It wasn't just a oh shucks this happened. It was this was a you know repeated. It, it lack seems of like they are working control. toward the lack of institutional control. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because to me, I think they know that if they do get taken to court, they don't have the proof to be able to sway a jury. Um, They might have enough proof for them to say we're going to punish them. But at the end of the day, I don't think that they feel like they have enough to be able to go into a court of law. And as we know, people can get out of a court of law and be declared innocent and get away with it. When in reality, they probably weren't really innocent. There just wasn't enough, you know, proof there to actually, um, you know, get them now far from me to say somebody is not innocent who was declared innocent. But I mean, I think most people would be aware of stories like that uh, where that's happened. And I think the NCAA is doing everything they can to try to paint this narrative. Like you were saying, or ESPN is trying to paint this narrative that Michigan has lost all control mm-hmm. and nobody is keeping track of what's going on there. And we are going to blast the program because of this, uh, whether they accomplish that or not, like we've said, that's up mm-hmm. in the air. Yeah. Um, but Zach, if you want my prediction, I, I guess I'll give my thought process where i'm at right now i'm not saying it's like my final prediction just where i'm at right now obviously this continues to evolve i i truly do think we see wins vacated from 2021 and 2022 i don't know if 2023 will be completely vacated or just partially vacated i don't know how that will look i do think we get at least a two-year bull ban and i think that sharon moore gets a half season suspension or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I don't know if he gets a show call show cause. Um, I tend to believe that Harbaugh Partridge, some of those other guys will get show causes because they're level one. Um, but I don't know if Sharon Moore will get that. Do you have a prediction or do you have any thoughts well, about what the punishment could be? Can I, can I ask a question real quick yes. on yours? Is it definitive that if there's a bowl ban, it's also a playoff ban? Um, so I did a video on this for the Voice of College Football, Ohio State. It is possible for the college football playoffs to say we are not going to adhere to the ruling of the NCAA. It's also possible that the BCS could have done that. It's also possible the College Football Association could have done that. That was formed in 1979. Um, it's possible all those groups could have done that. There have been tens of hundreds of in- instances where players have had bowl bans or not players, uh, teams have had bowl bans and every single time they've been upheld. So could it happen? Technically? Yes. Will it happen? I can't really see it happening. I I, I can't see the college football playoff committee sticking their neck out for this. And saying mm-hmm. no, they belong in. I yeah. just, I can't, I can't see it. Yeah. Well, and I, I think you'd have a lot of programs fighting that too, which I think it does matter. You got powerful ads that'll be involved at the playoff. I, I tend to be in line, pretty much in line with you, Jr. On 
predictions. Like I, I, I don't know how you don't vacate. Well, first of all, vacating stupid. Like, but I, oh, I think. Oh yeah, we've talked about that multiple yeah. times. You, but, but they'll do it. Right. Um, if you're gonna do a bull ban, you do vacating. I mean, it's yeah. it's literally always happened. Yeah, and I I would think. I I think it's hard to know how much this impacted the second half of the season for 2023. So like, I think I, I agree with you. Like, I think that could go either way. I think the national championship could go either way. Um, I, I think I tend to agree that a two year bull ban, um, 20, I, I would say 25 and 26. I, cause I think there's, it's going to be tied up in 24. And I think you'll get either the end of this season or the beginning of 2025. You'll see it. Sharon Moore suspension. Like, I just think things are going to get junked up by fighting and, and stuff. Yeah, I don't I don't think if you are somebody hoping for a suspension, bull ban, whatever it is, I don't think you get your hopes up for this year. Um, they haven't even presented the notice of allegations yet, and Michigan no. still has 90 days to respond. And then after those 90 days, there is a time period where Michigan works with the NCAA to agree on um, some kind of punishment. Yeah. Um, I think people forget that they have to work together and agree. Um, obviously Michigan's not, you know, getting exactly what they want, but the NCAA, they have to come to some kind of common ground with Michigan. Um, and I think that's why 2023 will stick is I think Michigan will say, sure, vacate 2021, 2022. Don't touch 2023. Ban us for bowl games, but don't touch 2023. Yep. Give us a show cause, give us a suspension, but don't touch 2023, 2023. And I think that, you know, with Connor Stallings being fired in the middle of the year, they have a good argument there. Yep. So, yeah. All right, Zach. Um, I think we did an excellent job of, of covering it and giving our thoughts. And I'm sure there will be plenty of Michigan fans who say that we did not, but, you know, <laughs> it's what it is. Uh, I'm sure there will be plenty of Ohio State fans that disagree with some of the things we said, too. Uh, that's all good. If you have any thoughts, please do put them in the comment section. We do appreciate that. Um, Zach, do you have any final thoughts before we get out of here? I, I think just this is a complicated mess. And so, like, I think any you know anybody who says, oh, I know exactly what should happen, like, like we don't know what exactly should happen. And, and I, I'm still trying to figure out what is the impact on like of advanced scouting and all of this. And I think that's, I think that's been the hardest thing I've been wrestling with in this whole thing is I'm like, there are some who are like, this is not, this is nothing. We steal signs all the time, which they're, they're misunderstanding what's going on. I think most of the time. But then there's others who are like, this is anathema. And I'm like, I, I feel like it's somewhere in the middle, but I just, I, so I, I, th I feel like this whole time I've just really struggled to know how to treat this in terms of unfair advantage and what the punishment should be. Um, so like I, I'm as much as we rag on the NCAA, this is a really hard one. So I think the thing that's not hard is the lack of institutional control, like those elements are there, but I think the actual, the actual cheating I, has just been hard for me to get my, to wrap my head around. So. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, this is, I definitely do not envy the NCAA and trying to figure out this situation. Uh, you know, I, I don't even know what the right decision is. You know, mm -hmm. part of me thinks that you vacate, 2023 but also I mean like like I said Connor Stallions wasn't there when you won it all mm -hmm. so you know can you vacate something because you believe there was an impact of you know getting good mm -hmm. players because you were good the past two years I don't know yeah. I don't know if you can do that um you know do you do you reduce scholarships yeah even though you know that teams are essentially just going to use their walk-on spots mm -hmm. i don't know yeah. i do not for as much as we rag on the ncaa i do not envy them at all in this situation because yeah. this is an incredibly difficult decision 
to yeah. try to make. Yeah. There's a, a thing too, and I know we're going long, but there's a podcast that we should do when all this is over, which is what's the legacy? Like, what does this do to the legacy of Jim Harbaugh? Yeah. Because I, it, it, it's fascinating to think like this, this changes a lot more about Harbaugh than what urban stuff did for urban and for Jim Trestles, what it did for Tress for, you know, but like Ed Ogeron, like right. there, there's a I lot of coaches like to get it just right. You would have to bring on like a Michigan fan, a Stanford yeah. fan, <laughs> you know, yeah. you'd have to bring on, uh, a 49ers fan, like you'd have to bring on all of those people because obviously you're going to have the bias of the here and now, but yeah. his legacy is so much more than just what he accomplished or did not accomplish at yeah. Michigan. Yeah. What he did at Stanford, what he did at 49ers, and it's still being built with what he does Yeah, with the Chargers. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, that would be a very interesting episode to do. So, all right. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for watching or listening. We do appreciate it. Uh, you can catch me on the Ohio State channel for the Voice of College Football. You can also catch me on the OHIO podcast on uh, Sunday nights at 8 p.m. We do a live roundtable over there, bring on guests, do Big Ten rankings, stuff like that. Uh, so very fun. I gave uh, some hot takes about my coaches' rankings <laughs> uh, last night, so... Uh, if you want to go over there and check that out, Zach, where can people find you? Yeah. Big 10 football talk. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to move to, uh, two a week, uh, Mondays and Thursdays, I but I'll also be on, uh, the big 10 huddle, uh, at least every Tuesday night for the foreseeable future. And you'll probably get to hear from me a little bit more than that too, but yeah, excited for football season to start. So. Oh Yeah. And like I said, um, catch us every single Monday morning at 6 a.m. You're listening to this now. It's released at 6 a.m. Tuesday night and Wednesday night. We have our live shows, one football, one basketball at 9 p.m. And then we also have a Friday morning show at 6 a.m. and a Saturday morning show. Those are all recorded at 6 a.m. Zach may join me for some of those at some point um, as we roll closer to the season. We are going to adjust the schedule at some point. At some point, there will be you know, adjustment of doing a show maybe on a Sunday night or something like that, just to, uh, you know, try to give you guys maybe some better game recaps and stuff a little bit closer to when they actually end. Um, if you have a certain time frame that you would like us to do it, you're like, Hey, just go live Saturday nights and, you know, watch big 10 after dark and recap the other games from the week. Uh, you know, maybe we'll do that, but uh, we'd love to know what you think. So thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Thank you to Zach for coming on and talking about this with us. Have a good one.